Hello everyone, welcome to the KZGN News. Today we'll bring you news from Washington, Planned Parenthood Clinic in Thousand Oaks, news from China Lake, today's KZGN Talking Points editorial, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inukern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Hello, I'm Tom Whitnick. Thanks for joining us for news affecting Ridgecrest in the Indian Wells Valley. In an update about the next House Speaker, current Speaker John Boehner has announced that the election of his replacement will probably be held next week. Boehner says the Republicans in the House want to get the election done as soon as possible. The election is scheduled for October 8th, next Thursday. It is on that date that the Republicans will select their nominee. Whoever is selected will then face a vote of the whole House later this month. It is reported that our Congressman, Kevin McCarthy, is the lead contender for the job. There are two others that threw in their names in the hat. A simple majority vote is all that is needed to be elected. Well, with all the recent news about Planned Parenthood clinics, we got this report. Investigators are looking into a suspicious fire that erupted late Wednesday at Planned Parenthood offices in Thousand Oaks. A fire alarm went off at about 11.30 p.m. last night. The offices are in the 1200 block of West Hillcrest Drive in Thousand Oaks. Firefighters quickly doused a small fire found inside the office. No one was inside at the time. The building sprinkler system went off, causing extensive damage. Arson and sheriff's investigators are examining the fire. The origin of the fire is suspicious because authorities don't know what started it. There was one window that was broken out in the area where the fire appears to have started. Nationally, Planned Parenthood has come under attack after undercover video surfaced this summer showing executives discussing recovering fetal tissue from abortions for research. Planned Parenthood has been under severe investigation since videos were released showing employees negotiating to sell baby body parts. The videos show employees speaking in a very callous tone. The congressional fight over Planned Parenthood dominating headlines around the country amid the threat of a government shutdown. California politicians are getting in on the action at the local level. Cecil Richards, president of Planned Parenthood, told House Republicans at a hearing on Tuesday, Capitol Hill on Tuesday that the organization did not break the law. Richards defended the organization as its use of federal funds comes under scrutiny. This story is important because the fire was right here in California. It could point to a possible start of attacks and may be copied at other clinics. In news from China Lake, we get this announcement about the Sidewinder AIM-9X Block II. The AIM-9X Sidewinder missile program reached a major program milestone when Sean Stackley, Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development and Acquisition, signed the Full Rate Production Acquisition Decision Memorandum August 17th to approve full rate production for the AIM-9X-2. Also called AIM-9X Block 2, this successfully culminates a missile upgrade development effort that started in 2007. Full rate production approval follows the Navy declaring initial operational capability on March 31st with Block 2 missiles, now deployed with the fleet. This missile was completely designed and built at China Lake, and now it sits under the wings of every fighter airplane the entire U.S. military has as well as being on many of our allies' planes. The Block II is an upgrade with new processors, a new active optical target detection device with an added data link, and improved algorithms implemented with software to increase the effectiveness of the missile system. The Naval Air Warfare Center Weapons Division team played a vital role in the development of the components, as well as being the Navy's lead development and testing activity. Captain James Stoneman, Air-to-Air -Air Missiles Program Manager, noted NOCWD's technical expertise is why we have a good missile and why we were authorized to go to full rate production. The NOCWD team plays a key role in the success of the program, said Dr. Mark Lambert, Sidewinder Technical Project Office Lead. From producing the telemeter for instrumented test missiles, to flight testing, to logistic support, to production engineering and systems analysis, the NOCWD team has a full spectrum of the vital subject matter expertise needed to make the program work. This is an outstanding group of hardworking professionals who should be proud of their accomplishments. The AIM-9X Block II now joins the inventory with the legacy air-to-air -air missile variants of the AIM-9X Block I and the AIM-9M. In more news from China Lake, we have received this announcement. They have set the annual Navy Ball for October 16th at Kermagee Center. 
the Naval Air Weapons Station, China Lake, Commanding Officer Captain Rich Wiley has announced that the station's annual Navy Ball will be held Friday, October 16th at the Kerr McGee Center in Ridgecrest. NoHo's cocktails will be served from 5 to 6.30 p.m. The ceremony and dinner will follow from 6.30 to 11 p.m. According to the captain, the venue was changed from on base to out in town to accommodate access for community members who would like to attend. This ball will celebrate the Navy's 240th birthday. Members of the community, retired military, reservists, and veterans are encouraged to attend the event. The event will include dinner, a formal program, and dancing. All those attending will receive a commemorative coin. The cost is a sliding schedule depending on rank. Cost is $50 for civilians, $50 for active duty military personnel in the rank of E9 and officers in the rank of O4 and above. It's $45 for active duty military personnel in the ranks of E7 and A8 and officers in the ranks of O1 to O3. It's $40 for active duty military personnel in the ranks of E5 and E6 and $35 for those in the ranks E4 and below. Anyone who would like to sponsor a military member at the ball can call OS1 Rasha Urteco at 760-939-4732. Tickets will go to the lower ranking military members first. Attire is navy dinner dress blue, full dress blue for military personnel, and black tie evening gown or better for civilians. For more information or to purchase tickets, please call your command navy ball representative or AC1 Jed Spencer at 760-939-5475 or Urteco at 760-939-4732. For an accurate dinner count, please reserve your tickets by October 8th. Looking for something fun to do this Saturday? Well, the USO on West Fish Coast Boulevard is having a chili throwdown this Saturday. Just who makes the best darn chili in the valley? Get your taste buds ready. You'll get a chance to find out this Saturday, October 3rd, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., as the historic USO building continues its pre-celebration festivities leading up to the big 70th anniversary weekend, October 15th through 18th. The chili throwdown will bring together some of the best chili chefs in the valley. The public will get to sample these smoldering creations along with a drink and a side dish and a palate cleanser and a ballot to vote for the best of the best, all for just a mere $10 per person. Mayor Peggy Breeden and her panel of chili experts will be judging entries at 11.30 a.m. Eat hearty neighbors, come join us. In more weekend event news, we get this announcement from the Friends of the Library. They are announcing a fall book sale. This book sale helps cover costs for the local library. The sale will be this Saturday, October 3rd. It will be in the old Albertson Shopping Center up on North Norma Street. It will run from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Library members can come one hour early and have first viewing of all the books. Members can start viewing at 9 a.m. Now stay with us for today's KSGN Talking Points editorial coming up next. Thanks for staying with us. Now it's time for the 82nd KZGN News Talking Points editorial. Here's today's topic. Are we headed to war, maybe even the prophesied Third World War? Well, we have been hearing criticisms about Obama's lack of leadership in the Middle East War. The best that can be figured out about Obama's plan for the Middle East crisis is to throw a spitball every once in a while from an airplane and say he's doing something to stop ISIS. The soft approach since pulling troops from the Middle East has caused this crisis. They spent over $500 million training about 100 Syrian rebel soldiers, and to date, half of those changed sides when deployed and gave all the U.S. supplied weapons to the enemy. Even the ones that didn't desert have been caught giving weapons to the enemy. So the program has been suspended, $500 million down the drain and the crisis has now taken on an even more serious turn. Due to our lack of leadership, Russia has now entered into the mix. They have set up an airbase in Syria. This airbase includes airplanes, helicopters, ground troops, air defense missile systems, ground defensive weapons, and all the support for this operation. Did anyone notice how fast they did it? It took two days to move in and be fully functional as a forward combat airbase. This was well planned in advance. This was done supposedly to help fight ISIS. Yet yesterday, 
Their first attacks went against the rebels we are supporting to take out the vicious Syrian dictator. And then some three-star general delivers a message to our embassy in Iraq, basically warning us to stay out of Syria. Do you see the pompous attitude the Russians have towards this administration? A three-star has the audacity to make that declaration to a country. And to think Putin was just recently in meetings with Obama. I wonder if he warned Obama that they were going to set up this base in Syria. Putin has absolutely no respect for the United States, none. And today's news is reporting that Iran has started airstrikes against the U.S.-backed rebels in Syria. Did you catch that? Iran has today joined Russia attacking the U.S.-backed rebels in Syria. They aren't attacking ISIS. These actions by Russia and Iran are severe escalations against the United States. This passive administration quietly sits on the sidelines waiting for something to happen. And let's not forget Obama's line in the sand with Syria. What a joke that was. And Obama tried to spin that as a success in that Syria supposedly turned in all their chemical weapons. If you believe that one, I have a bridge to nowhere I'd like to sell you. The world is laughing at us. The dictators are, and enemies of the United States are celebrating the Obama plan. So what's next after the Middle East? Europe and Israel are first in the crosshairs of extremists. When all heck breaks loose in Israel and or Europe, who will they turn to for help? Russia? China? I doubt it. Again, we will have to step in and save their countries. All this will happen, and we may also even be put into a war with Russia. Russia and Iran are allies against the United States and plan on taking control of the Middle East. Russia is now open in their plan. And don't think the timing of this airbase wasn't well thought out. Putin knows Obama will do nothing to stop it except have some meetings that do nothing. With one and a half years left in the Obama administration, Putin has plenty of time to complete his plan of Middle East dominance. Do I have a solution? No, I don't. It's above my pay grade. However, I and millions of Americans just like me can see that the current plan is not working. Obama disapproval ratings are now at 53%. Just where will it lead? Time will tell. If these mostly masked barbaric cowards are willing to cut off the heads of a living person with anger based just on their religious beliefs, then we have to be prepared for the worst war the world has ever seen. Again, I hope I'm wrong, but I see us having to get involved in another world war. And this next war could include nuclear weapons and chemical weapons. If the extremists get access to these weapons, they are barbaric enough that they will use them. Oh, and don't forget the recent huge immigrant exodus out of Syria into Europe. All those countries that took those millions of people in are now in Europe just waiting for their call to attack. And this administration is even planning on offering to take 100,000 of them into the United States. And do you caring people out there, have you noticed not one Middle East country has allowed these immigrants to come into their country? They know what will happen. Why doesn't this administration notice that? Again, I don't know the solution. None of us are, know enough about all the real goings on behind the scenes. None of us have access to the intelligence a person would need to provide a solution. But our let's sit back and see what happens strategy is not working. Admit it and do something else. In conclusion, I am very alarmed in what is going on in the Middle East. With Russia now based in the war zone, things will not get better. I really fear war is on the horizon, real war, ugly war, a war with the likes we have never seen before. I really hope I'm wrong. I'm Tom Winnick and that's what I think. I'd like to know what you think. If you have any comments about this editorial, or would like to discuss or recommend a topic, I'd like to hear from you. Please email into info at kzgn.net. Now stay tuned for Burroughs Bits, weather and sports when we come back. From the Burroughs High School TV studio, I'm Emily Hickey with the Burroughs Video Bits for Thursday, October 1st, 2015.
Let's take a look at how athletes of the school are doing with the Burroughs Athletics website. The Burroughs High School Robotics Club teams have been working hard on their robots since August. Finally get a chance to show what they know. They will be sending three teams to Sultana High School Saturday, October 3rd to participate in the VEX Robotics 2015. Nothing but net competition. Powder Puff athletes are already practicing hard getting ready for the homecoming week game on Wednesday, October 7th. Tickets will be on sale at the gate. The BHS band performs 6.15 p.m. at the Taft High School in Bakersfield this Saturday, October 3rd. Burroughs Homecoming Dance will be Saturday, October 11th. Tickets are on sale in the Sherman Shack before school, at lunch, and after school. Ticket prices are at $15 each with, the, with an ASB card. You must show your ASB card when you buy tickets. Tickets are $20 without an ASB card. Ticket prices will go up on Wednesday, October 7th. Tickets may be purchased at the dance for $25 each with ASB card and $30 without ASB card. Drama is hard at work with their production of The Wizard of Oz coming on, on the first two weekends of November. That's our segment for the Burroughs High School TV broadcast of Ridgecrest, California. This is Emily Hickey. And now here's Keith with the weather. Thank you, Tom. From the National Weather Service, many portions of the eastern U.S. are currently experiencing heavy rains and gusty winds associated with the frontal system. These heavy rains are likely to continue for the next few days, even if the center of Hurricane Joaquin doesn't make landfall and stays offshore. The resulting inland flood potential could complicate preparations should it head toward the coast. Temperatures across the nation, Carolinas came in at 74, Georgia 70, Arkansas 67, Northern Texas 74, Arizona 86, and Los Angeles at 71. For our forecast here in the IWV, tonight will be clear with a low around 59, breezy with a southwest wind 20 to 25 miles per hour with gusts as high as 35. Friday will be sunny with a high near 87, southwest wind 5 to 10 miles per hour. Friday night will be clear with a low around 62. Light northwest wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Saturday, it will be sunny with a high near 91. West northwest wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Saturday night, mostly clear with a low around 62. West wind, 5 to 15 miles per hour. On Sunday, 30% chance of showers. Otherwise, mostly sunny with a high near 80. Southwest wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Gusts as high as 25. Sunday night, 20% chance of showers. Partly cloudy with a low around 56. West wind, 20 to 25 miles per hour with gusts as high as 30. On Monday, 20% chance of showers, mostly sunny with a high near 82. West northwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Monday night, mostly clear with a low around 58. South southwest wind, 5 miles per hour. And on Tuesday, sunny with a high near 88. Northwest wind, 5 miles per hour. And as a look at your forecast for the AWV, now back to Tom and the rest of the KZGN News. Thanks, Keith. Let's go to Tom Heck with sports. And a very pleasant Thursday afternoon to everyone. Boy, Major League Baseball, the last couple days, we have a great race in the American League West. The Angels tonight will be at Texas. The Angels right now find themselves three games behind the Rangers in second place in the West. They actually trail the Houston Astros now by a half a game. Last night, the Angels lost to Oakland 8-7 to at home despite hitting five home runs in that game. They take two of three from the A's, but that's little consolation right now. The Angels will have games tonight, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Arlington. If the Angels can sweep and win all four games, they'll win the American League West. Who would have thought it? If the Angels can get the wild card position, Houston this weekend, who the Angels are a half game behind, they take on the Arizona Diamondbacks in Phoenix. 
if the Angels can overcome the Astros, they would play against the New York Yankees next Tuesday in the Bronx. One game, winner take all. Should be very, very interesting. Last night, the Rangers beat Detroit by a score of 6-2. to two. The Rangers take 2-3 of three from Detroit. And last night, Seattle, up in Seattle, the Mariners lose a very tough game, 7-6, to six, to the Houston Astros. So you've got the three teams plus the Minnesota Twins. The Twins are a game back of the Angels. The Twins are a game and a half back of Houston. The Twins play against Cleveland tonight. Then they will take on Kansas City at home to conclude the season. So the Twins actually still alive in the wild card hunt. National League, pretty easy. The Dodgers clinched the other night. They lost last night in a meaningless game up in San Francisco. They were shut out by a score of 5 to nothing. The night before, Clayton Kershaw got a win, had 13 strikeouts, a one-hitter. So the Dodgers will probably take on the New York Mets next week in the National League Championship Series. That will be very, very interesting. All right, let's take a look at the um, other two teams involved in the playoffs. The St. Louis Cardinals defe defeated Pittsburgh in the second game of the doubleheader in Pittsburgh last night, so they clinch the Central Division Championship. The Pirates right now have a three-game lead on Chicago with four games left for the leading wild card position, and the Cubs would have the second wild card position. So either way, it will be the Pirates and the Cubs in the National League wild card. The difference would be the second place team gets a home game in the winner take all. Should be very interesting when it comes to that next week. Looking forward to it as a great uh, baseball fan. All right, let's take a look at the um, a little bit of local sports and the volleyball team at Burroughs doing very well. A conference victory the other night. They only have lost one match all season. Michelle Lazaro doing a great job there. The Burroughs football team has the weekend off. It's their bye week. They will take on Sultana. Next Friday night that game is here. A rematch of last year's game in which Sultana won. That was Sultana's only one of the season last year. The Burroughs trying to get back at them. The Burroughs after their big victory against Barstow are one and four, but they've played a very tough non-conference schedule. All right, let's look at the junior high sports real quick. Last weekend here at Saracoso, uh, St. Anne's School won the mixed division and the eighth grade division in the annual preseason junior high volleyball tournament. They had convincing wins in both divisions and had a lot of fun in their last championship game as they defeated Mammoth, who actually played pretty well. It was well supported. Charter School did very well also. Charter School won the 7th grade division. Ryan Kaufman, their coach, does a great job with them. And Coach Dave Cordes does a very good job with the St. Anne's program. Now all those teams will play up at Saracoso again in November, the first Saturday in November. And this weekend, up in Lone Pine, it'll be Trona and Lone Pine eight-man football. That's your sports for this Thursday for KZGN. I'm Tom Heck. So that's the news for today. Officer KZGN TV know you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing KZGN TV, Ridgecrest's only locally owned community TV station. Coming up next, Ridgecrest Talk with Al Huey and Robert Iron with guest Gary Parsons, City of Ridgecrest Economic Development Director.